The game I'm about to talk about contains themes of depression, suicide and self-harm. If any of these things are triggering for you, I'm just giving you this warning so you can skip this video and so I can avoid making anyone upset or uncomfortable. Now, let's get on to this review of Silent Hill, The Short Message. Why do we play games? Is it to see the most beautiful creations that artists can make, rendered an engine? Is it to experience the best gameplay, crafted for us by veteran game developers? Is it to have fun? Honestly, everyone has their reasons for playing video games, but I think that underlying all that, there's one defining reason that we play video games. I think that we play games to feel something. That something might be excitement from action games, satisfaction from puzzle games, or fear from horror games, to name just a few genres. That something might also be something, anything, other than what we're feeling. Many video games take us away from the real world. They tell stories that we enact, literally putting us into the shoes of a character. They allow us to escape from the often difficult and draining world that we live in, transporting us to another reality where, at the end of the game, you can put a controller down and move on, fulfilled and satisfied, ready to face the day with new energy and a smile on our faces. Some video games, however, aren't like that. They put us in the shoes of characters who suffer in ways that mirror our real-world experiences. They show us hardship, sadness and difficulty. They seek to show us, through the medium of video games, how much of a toll constant challenges can have on someone's psyche and their mental health. It's a twist on the more common narrative that games allow you to experience something that nobody could experience in real life. These games aim to allow you to experience something very different, something that very much does exist in real life, but so many are unable to comprehend or understand. In doing so, they're often the most meaningful and human of any game you could possibly play. They're also often the most haunting, as they pull on our very real world fears and anxieties. That is the sort of game that Silent Hill, the short message is. As the title suggests, Silent Hill The Short Message is a brief experience. Shadow dropped onto the PlayStation Store a couple of days ago. It's a standalone game in the Silent Hill series, ahead of the potential 2024 release of the Silent Hill 2 remake. There are other Silent Hill games in the pipeline according to Konami, but we're yet to see much of them so far. The short message lasts approximately two hours, depending on how long you take to solve the puzzles littered around the villa, an apartment complex in a fictional town in Germany. You play as Anita, a teenage girl who's been trapped inside the villa for reasons that become clear later on in the game. I for one am very glad that the short message lasts as long as it does. It deals with very heavy themes, and it does so gracefully, partly due to the lack of the need to stretch out its story over 10 or 20 hours. One thing to note is that this isn't a survival horror game, but it does contain elements of that, which I'll go over later. I can't quite describe why I love this game so much in one condensed block, so I'll break it down into several different elements. Gameplay, characters and themes. Make sure that you stick around for themes. That's where I talk about what I think are the most important and impressive aspects of this game. And if you manage to stick around for that long, you may as well subscribe too. Right, let's start with gameplay then. As I mentioned before, Silent Hill The Short Message isn't a survival horror title. It's far more of a psychological horror game dealing with themes of mental health, bullying and suicide, all from the perspective of a teenager. It's very much story focused, as you'll be exploring the linear setting of the villa. Make sure that you read anything and everything that you can pick up, as each thing that you read advances the story and triggers certain interactions or cutscenes. Those interactions come thick and fast by the way, as in the two hours you get to experience this title, it throws a metric ton of twists at you, with some you'll see coming and some that you won't. There'll be one overarching question that everyone will to know as they read or watch a review of this game however, and that question is, is it scary? The answer to that question is unequivocally yes, but that depends of course on your own personal tolerance. This isn't a game thick with jump scares, this is a game that piles on layers of atmosphere and tension with excellent map and sound design. It's an experience that makes you feel trapped within your own mind, which is thematically perfect seeing the themes that the developers have chosen here. You wander through corridors with sticky notes crawled with abusive messages, come across mannequins with bags and painted faces to reflect school bullies, 
and find haunting messages scribbled on the walls. Oh, and I said that this game wasn't thick for jump scares, but jump scares it certainly does have. When you hear your phone emitting static and you see the screen begin to glitch, brace yourself, it's time for the most stressful puzzle of your life. Silent Hill has been responsible for some of the most iconic horror game franchise characters of all time. Think characters such as Pyramid Head. The Sakura Demon is something else entirely. Covered in pink flowers and faceless, it jerkily runs at you after being triggered by the static. You can't fight, so there's only one solution. Run. Talking of solutions, these chase sequences are where the puzzle elements of the short message come to light. They're nothing too complex, but my god are they stressful. Imagine doing a puzzle where you walk through a loop of doorways until you find the real exit. Now imagine doing that while a demon chases you, as your character muffles her screams and your camera shakes from running, sweat dripping down your palms and onto your controller. Silent Hill really knows how to make a simple puzzle seem borderline impossible. It's remarkable how little you die seeing as during those puzzle sequences you're under constant pressure. The hardship here isn't through attrition alone though, but it's through atmosphere and stress. The last puzzle is particularly brutal. Some may find it frustrating, but I'll leave that one for you to experience. I personally found it exhilarating and make sure you listen very carefully as audio clues will lead you through the last puzzle. Overall though, this gameplay is nothing hugely new, but what is here is used to eerily good effect and I was on the edge of my chair throughout the entire experiences. Let's do characters now. So in the few hours since I played Silent Hill The Short Message, reviews have started to drop. Spoiler alert, they're not positive at all. That actually surprised me, until I started to read the reviews as opposed to just taking a quick look at the review score. Very few, if any of the reviews, refer to the characters as anything but cringy, and the story as anything but generic bullying is bad. I'm sorry, but these reviews are completely missing the point. Sure, there are a few rogue elements, such as the witch's curse, but that's a single, entirely ignorable element. It's also not the point or the focus of the story. This isn't a story about what Anita went through. Mostly anyway. This is about what one of her co-characters went through. I won't spoil any big twists, but this story isn't rooted in the fear of one teenager's experience with bullying. It's far darker than that. This is about a person dealing with survivor's guilt. It's about a suffering, heavily depressed teenager clinging on to whatever connection she can get to to get her through her day and how her desperation for these connections led to terrible consequences. It's a very dark premise and the voice acting may sometimes be clunky but it certainly isn't bad. Every review that I've read so far has looked at this game from such a one-dimensional perspective. It's as if none of them are aware of the modern challenges of being a teenager especially a teenage girl. Anita is experiencing someone else's pain throughout the story, and she's doing so while attempting to use social media as a form of self-validation, which of course leads to her dealing with misogyny and the vile sexualization of her innocent posts. It's a subject matter that many people relate to, and I was frankly shocked at the total lack of empathy or inference by the vast majority of reviews that I've read so far. Also, sure, the bullying itself isn't subtle, but why should it need to be? Often the worst kind of bullying is the type that involves open contempt, as a total lack of pretense behind it all can hurt a hundred times more than a false sense of security. The ways in which suffering is portrayed in stunningly creative paintings, where someone's mental scars are painted onto them in cherry blossoms is darkly beautiful. Of course, behind all paintings that represent pain so candidly, is an artist also in pain, which is a perfect representation of the character of Maya. The Sakura Demon is also linked to all of this, but my thoughts about that belong to the next section, themes. If you've stuck around for this long, you should subscribe. Oh, and click the notification bell too. I upload regular reviews, and next week is particularly stacked. Foam Stars, an indie review, and my final thoughts on Power Worlds are all releasing next week. Anyway, onto the final chapter of this review. The theme section.
The themes in Silent Hill The Short Message are not subtle. Then again, themes don't have to be subtle to be effective. Another point to make is that I've seen so many reviewers point to this as something that's unanimously bad. I can make a counterpoint to this easily. When was the last time that someone was bullied subtly? The last time someone felt survivor's guilt subtly? Or the last time depression and suicidal thoughts were small parts of a sufferer's life? These feelings are all consuming and can alter how a person thinks and feels. The cycle of abuse that's shown in later parts of the story that led to Anita's behaviours and thoughts is definitely less effective when the motivations behind that abuse are shown. However, if you choose to ignore those motivations, then it's still possible to take the story as a chilling look into survivor's guilt and the emotions of the people left behind after losing a loved one to suicide. This game is clearly made to be taken in a more metaphorical sense than a literal one. For instance, is this a Kuro demon just a monster, or is it a physical reflection of Anita's guilt? Are the constant reminders of bullying Anita's experiences, or her brain attempting to imagine the suffering experienced by Maya as it tries to empathise with her and process Anita's own complicated emotions? There are many ways in which to interpret this story, and in every review, it's only been described as one-dimensional, which to me, is insanity. One thing that's been rarely if ever mentioned is the ending. The last message contains a surprisingly emotional and tender ending, one that wraps up the extremely dark story in a bow and presents it to you as what it is, a beautiful reminder of the most important things in life and how every one of us needs that one thing in order to survive. It's an ending that made me genuinely emotional and I'm sure it will make many of you emotional too. In short, I know I'm an outlier here but me personally, I'd strongly recommend that you play Silent Hill for short notice, and that's why the reviews are completely wrong. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you all very soon for my next video. See you later.